In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build and use your DocuSign template. In the previous video, I showed you how to convert an envelope you had already sent to someone into a template, but this time you will learn how you can build the template from scratch. And before we get into actually building the template, you need to know that DocuSign offers five types of templates. And the first step in building the template is working out which template type do you actually need to create. And this depends on the document and the workflow that you are trying to automate. So let me show you the five types. I actually like to group the five types of template in two main categories, the static template and the dynamic template. If your documents look like a form, then they are static. And if your document structure looks like a letter, you need to use a dynamic template. Now, within the static template, we have three categories of templates, standard, power form, and web form. The standard template is simply when you want to send a document to someone and as the sender of the document, you log into DocuSign or you're leveraging integrations and you're clicking a button in your software or whatever software you use. And then a document gets sent to the signer. That's a standard template. Now a power form template is the same as a standard template, but instead of you sending a document to someone, that someone accesses the template using a link that was shared with them before, or maybe it's an embedded link on your website. For example, if you're a broker and you help people seek loans, you could have the link to the loan application form on your website and your signers, when going to the website, find the link and they just access the document, fill it out and sign it without you knowing who those people are. That's what a power form is good for. And finally, a web form is very similar to a power form. The only difference is the visual aspect. Web forms are built for mobile devices, which means that when you have complex documents need to be filled out on mobile devices, it isn't nice to do that on a tiny screen. And so web forms will create a visual layer that shows all the fields that need to be populated by the signer. And so that makes the completion of the document super simple. Then your signer fill out all of the fields. And when they're done filling out all the fields, they will see the document which they can review and sign. And so in this specific video, what I want to show you is how to create those three types of templates, the web form, the power form, as well as the standard static templates. And in the next video, I will show you how to create templates for dynamic documents. Now, I want you to understand the difference between static and dynamic. This document here, it's called a static document because it has clearly defined placeholders for the data to be entered by the signers. And no matter how long the information gets, then the, the rest of the layout, the, the static text will never be affected. So even if I have a super long name here, my line two is never going to get pushed down because people don't have names that are as long as two lines. So this is why it's called a static document because this, the layout of the document is static. It never changes. But with dynamic document structures like this offer letter, while there are clearly defined placeholders that will be replaced with the information that is needed for the actual signer, such as the position title in this case, the location of those variables might vary depending on the length. So for example, if the position title is sales representative, that would be 20 characters. But if the position was account manager, that would be 15 characters. And this means we will have either too much white space or not enough white space. And if we were to use a static template on a dynamic document, that will cause your documents to look like this. And so this is why you never want to use a static template for a dynamic document static template can only be used for static documents. And so in the next video, I will show you how to create dynamic templates for your dynamic documents. So I really recommend you watch it after you watch this specific video. And I've included the link to the training materials that I'm showing on my screen right now in the DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet that you can download using the link below. And if you're wondering who is this person, my name is Sofian Saudi. I'm an ex DocuSign employee and now founder of Solisan Consulting. Since 2019, we've been helping over 2,000 organizations implement DocuSign using templates, integrations, and training. If this is something you're interested in to save time and to get up to speed very quickly with as little effort as possible, you can book a complimentary DocuSign implementation strategy session using the link just down below as well. But for now, let's go back to building our template. For now, we will create a template, a static template for this bank form. We want to collect information about our candidates so that we can pay them as soon as they start working with us. And we want this document to be also made available to payroll. So the first step that we'll do is go to our templates tab and then we will click on create a new template. We'll call our template the bank form. Why not? And then we'll upload our bank information. 
form, the next step is to add our recipients. And instead of specifying the name and email for variable recipients, such as the candidate, it's never the same candidate that's going to receive the form in all the envelopes that we will create using this template, we're going to specify a role. And so here that's going to be the candidate. I'm going to set a signing order because I want my candidate to receive the document and sign it first. So I don't need to change that, that recipient action from here. Now, each time I'm going to use this template to send a document to a candidate, I'm going to have to specify payroll's name and email, but I don't really want to have to do that because it's always going to be the same person. So I can just actually enter the name and email of the payroll person here. I can customize the email subject and the email message. So when we'll use this template to generate the envelope, will be asked to provide the name and email of the actual candidate. And that candidate's first and last name will be pre-populated in the email subject of the envelope, which is something that I'm going to be able to easily find in my email inbox. I can also add something like a little message. And before I click next, I can also turn on the automated reminders so that DocuSign will send a reminder to the candidate until they've signed every two days. And I can also ask DocuSign to wait for five days before the first reminder goes out. You can customize the numbers the way that you like. Then I'm going to click on next. And this is when I can drag and drop my signature fields. This is the new DocuSign editor. I really don't like it. So if you see this and you're setting up a static document template, which is our case here, I recommend you click on switch to classic editor. This view is good only for dynamic document template setup in my sense. Um, and actually, I still don't like it for dynamic documents. But here, we can just drag our fields for the candidate. So candidate is selected. I don't have any other recipients. Even if I have payroll in here in my recipient workflow, I cannot add fields for payroll because payroll doesn't have a needs to sign action. They only have a receive the copy. And so receive the copy recipient don't have any fields that we can add for them because they don't need to do anything other than receiving a copy of the signed document. So for the first name, I'm going to drag a name field and change the settings of that field to make it a first name. And I'm going to duplicate this field so that I don't have to pull it from here because I like to save a bit of time when I'm building my templates and do control or command D for duplicate and drag my field here. And then I'm going to select a last name. Now for my street address, I'm going to use a text field. For my city, I'm also going to use a text field. And for my zip, I'm also going to use a text field. I can add a validation to my zip, which means that by choosing this validation, my signer will have to enter information that matches the pattern of a zip. So it has to be five numbers. Obviously, this is a postcode in the US. Now for the state, you've noticed that I haven't added a text field yet because I'm going to use a dropdown. And then in my dropdown, I'm going to add the different options that I want to add. So for example, that could be California, that could be New York, that could be Wyoming. That could be anything that you, all the states that you want. I'm not going to build them all in the call with you. As you can see, I have my drop down that's being built like this. Now, in order for me to reuse that drop down, because it can be very time consuming to set up all the options, you can click here and save as a custom field. And we call that the, the state field. And if we save this, then that field is going to appear here in my custom field. So these are the standard fields. These are my custom field and I can find my state here and I can pull it here for the bank state, right? Now for my social security number, I'm going to add a text field and I can also validate this with an SSN. And for the email address, I'm going to pull an email field. Why am I not using a text field for the email? It's simply because the email field, the name field, the company, the title, and date signed or automated fields. This means that our recipients won't need to do anything. Those fields will be populated automatically. The first and last name will be pulled from the recipient's information that I, as the sender of the document, will provide at the time of sending the envelope using this template. And the email, it's exactly the same thing. The email will be pulled from the email that I enter when sending the document. The date signed, if there was a date signed required on this document, will be automatically added based on the date and time of the signer's uh, time zone at the time of signing the document. And for the company and title, it depends. If the signer has a DocuSign account, these will be pre-populated, but the signer can update if they want to. And if the signer doesn't have a DocuSign account, 
these will just act as exactly like text field. And so signers can provide the information the way that they like. For the phone number, I'm going to leave this like this. And then for the bank name, I'm also going to use a text field. And then for the street address, same thing. But actually, you know what I could do here? Simply delete those two fields. And since those are the same field, I'm just going to copy paste. So it's a little bit faster. For my account, I'm going to use a text field. For the routing number, same thing. For the phone number, same thing. And then for the account type, I'm going to use a radio button because radio buttons will ensure that my signers don't check both options, unlike the checkbox. With checkbox, you can check two checkbox within the same checkbox group, but with radio buttons, if I select one and try to select the other one, the first one gets unselected. So that's what I want to happen here for my account. One, that's it, I guess. Our template is built. And now let's see how we can use it. So I'm going to click on save and close, and I'm going to click on my bank form template from my list of templates, and I'm going to click on use. And now I'm going to be asked to provide the email for the candidate which I'm adding here. If I want to pre-fill some of the information I have on this form, it might not be the best use case actually for this form. You probably won't want to pre-fill anything, but I can navigate in here and I can make some, I can pre-fill some of the information here. And for example, I could say, I don't want you to be able to update that field. So I'm making it read only. The candidate will see that but they will not be able to update this information, which is obviously something that I don't want, but just want to show you what's possible. Now, any of the modifications that I'm making in this form will not affect the template. This is just the envelope generated using the template. So if I send this thing and go back to my template, you see I've deleted the routing number. So if I go back to my template and edit it, you will see that the routing number field and the address field will still be intact. So the address and the routing number or phone number, I'm not sure which one I deleted, is still present. So this is how you create and use standard templates. I've just received the document, so I'm going to open it as the signer. And as you can see, I cannot update my street address because it was made read-only in the envelope that I've sent, and I don't have my routing number. My first and last name were populated, as well as my email address, so that's the correct behavior. I'm not going to fill this out because we're not trying to see how signers are signing very simple, fill out all the fields and then we'll click on finish. But what I want to show you now is how to turn this uh, template into a PowerForm template. So I'm going to go back to my bank form and now I'm going to click on more and create PowerForm and then create. What this will do is to give me a URL I can embed on the website. And so this is how my candidate will be able to access the form without me having to send it to them in the first place. Maybe you can place that URL on your company's intranet or welcome onboarding pack or something like this. And in this specific example, I forgot to lock this recipient for editing. So when you configure your power form, what you want to do is to go to your templates and then make sure that recipients that, that, that you don't want to be deleted from the workflow for them to be locked. And so you go to customize, advanced settings, don't allow senders to edit, don't allow senders to delete, and you save and close. And technically now, if I refresh this, it will prevent, my signers will not even see my payroll at all. And my candidate will just be able to enter their name and their email. Not gonna do it now, but just to show you how the power form works. Once the candidate uh, enters their name and email in the form, then I click on begin signing. And this is just the same signing experience as before. The bank information then gets pre-populated with name and the email, and it's the same workflow. Now let's see how to create the web form. What we need to do first is to make sure that all our fields have a label. And so this is something that I haven't done. So here we wanna make sure that everything here is labeled correctly. The label needs to be meaningful so that you know what information this field will hold. So here I would call this candidate street. I would call this candidate city and candidate state and candidate zip. I'm going to delete those and delete this as well but we can just pretend, just think in your mind that I've just renamed all of my fields. Now I can just save and close this updated template and I can now create a web form based on this template. So I'm gonna go start web form, create a web form, and then I'm gonna choose my bank form that I've just updated right now. And then DocuSign will create a web form on top of that template. And so here I can just customize the experience. So welcome to our team. 
I can add a description if I want to. I can add a button description if I want to. But really the power is in here. You see all my fields. It's a very clean user interface. And all my fields are pulled from my DocuSign template. I can rename them if I want to. For example, what is your name? And add more pages. I can add more fields if I want to. I'm not going to do it for now, but I just want to show you how the web form looks on a mobile device. So if I click start, this is what the web form looks like. But if I were to sign that same document on a mobile device, this is what the document would look like. It's a very different experience. And so if I fill this out, actually, you know what? Let me just activate it so that you see exactly what it looks like. So same thing as for the power form, it's giving me a link and that link can be embedded on a website. And so this is what the web form will look like. So I'm just filling out my name, my address, my city and my state and click next. Here I get a chance to review my form fields before I click next. And by clicking next, I'm actually submitting the web form. And now DocuSign is starting my envelope using the web form and also using the template that's underneath. And as you can see, all the fields were filled out based on the, the entries that I've submitted in the web form, but I'm still seeing the document. So don't think that by using the web form, you're hiding the actual document for your signers, not at all. You're showing the document as the last step so that they can review and sign without being bothered by the very cumbersome signing process of PDF documents. So let's summarize. If you have a static document that looks like the form that I showed you earlier, you need to use a static template, either a standard template if you want to send the document to your signers by logging into DocuSign or using an integration, or you can use a power form if you just want the form to be embedded on the website. And if you want that embedded form on the website to be mobile responsive, then you can go with a web form. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you how to set up dynamic document templates for documents that look like this so that your documents look professional and really as, as a reminder i'm not sure if you if you watch the other videos but this is really only 20 percent of automation that you're getting with docusign template you should aim to reach 100 percent automation and that's using integrations and so that's my goal with this channel to educate you to show you how you can get there i'll see you in the next video and until then happy signing